Welcome back to Nuclear News. Let's talk about what the heck happened this week. What is going on in this crazy space? First up, price action. Year to date, the Sprott Uranium Miners ETF is up 11%. Uranium massively outperforming the broader stock market, which is only up 4.6%. And so the risk on environment has arrived, maybe not permanently. Maybe this is just a short squeeze in a lot of different assets. Again, it also do with the macroeconomic environment. But in a positive macroeconomic environment, when risk on is here, uranium massively outperforms the broader stock market. And even when the market was falling, uranium proved to be a better store of value. It outperformed almost every other asset class. So let's start by comparing fuel sources in terms of carbon output. We have nuclear beating hydropower, beating solar, beating geothermal, beating solar PV roof, beating solar PV utility, and obviously beating the rest. The only thing it is losing to in terms of carbon output is wind offshore. We know how cumbersome wind assets are, right? How much space they require. Now, Korea curbs plans for renewables in push for more nuclear. This is counter trend. Most countries have been trying to adopt renewables, right? That has been the narrative, right? Renewables are the future. Well, Korea is curbing renewables. Other countries are going to start doing it as well because nuclear is defined as being just as green as the rest. And obviously it's greener than most. And so nuclear energy will be Korea's largest energy source by 2036. What happens when this trend continues? around the world. This is what South Korea is expected to look like by 2036. We do have nuclear in orange. We have renewables in red. So this could be a glimpse into how the entire energy mix of the planet Earth is going to be by 2036, because it just makes a lot of sense, right? Not all places are suitable for renewables. We know how revolutionary nuclear energy is. We know how green it is. And so just a glimpse into what is going on. This is just one example of this happening. Nuclear is also the only asset that can be used this way. Holtec claims SMR-160 can repurpose any coal-fired plant. Imagine just converting these massive holes in the ground into nuclear power generators. Holtec International has applied for a patent for multi-stage compressors that would enable any coal-fired plant to be repurposed by replacing its coal-fired boiler with clean steam from the SMR-160 small modular reactor. Again, when you're an early stage investor in revolutionary technologies, you get to take advantage of trends that the market has not yet picked up on. I don't think the market has picked up on coal-fired plants being converted to SMRs, among other use cases for this technology. This comes from the Canada Nuclear Association. Canada is rolling out a 30% investment tax credit for clean energy technology, including SMRs. But it doesn't include large nuclear, such as our world-leading Candu Tech. We need large nuclear included. And so... We have governments supporting it, subsidizing small modular reactor technology. It's already revolutionary in and of itself. And then you have governments subsidizing it. So it's just rocket fuel for the growth of this technology. Sweden makes regulatory push to allow new nuclear reactors. We're in the early stages of the adoption of it. Now let's cover what's going on with the existing massive reactors. Clean hydrogen, New York's nine mile point nuclear generating station is expected to demonstrate its first production of clean hydrogen using low temperature electrolysis in 2023. We're going to be generating hydrogen energy with nuclear energy. The Department of Energy plans to announce its second round selections for conditional credits through the Civil Nuclear Credit Program to help extend the operations of nuclear power plants at risk of being shutting down due to economic factors. So so the big plants and the small plants are growing in adoption. This is the year. Plant Vodal Unit 3 is expected to connect to the U.S. electric grid in 2023. Once Unit 3 and 4 are up and running, Plant Vodal will become the largest single generator of clean power in the nation. And so what is going to power all of these reactors? It's obviously going to be scarce above ground supply of uranium. And so what is one of the domestic assets that is being paid to do this? Among energy fuels and among uranium energy core, you have Peninsula Energy. Preconditioning well field flows are already underway at Penn Energy's Lance Uranium Project in Wyoming. And it's on track to resume uranium production 
in the first quarter of this year. Now, just one thing to say on top of is that a lot of these assets require capital. They require serious investment capital to get the uranium out of the ground. In a lot of cases, these assets are diluting their shareholders just to raise capital from the public markets to do it. But it doesn't change the demand for this resource. And so a lot of these assets will cash flow. They will get an ROI on their investment. The U.S. is not the only country investing heavily into uranium. Saudi Arabia plans to use domestic uranium for entire nuclear fuel cycles. So these big oil producing countries are investing in a competing energy source, nuclear. Uranium is off to a hot start in 2023. Sprott Asset Management CEO, he is absolutely correct. I want to bring up again that the U.S. government is subsidizing nuclear power. They are paying well above spot price to domestic producers. And so Peninsula Energy, energy fuels, again, are getting paid more than spot price because it's too low to get uranium out of the ground. So he is correct. But then at the same time, you have the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust primed to take more supply out of circulation. It's already scarce. This is January 13, 2023. Sprott issued no physical uranium trust units, raised no cash, but did stack 217,000 pounds with net asset value physical uranium at $3 billion. The Sprott Trust still holds $13 million for stacking, closing at a 4% discount to net asset value spot price. And so they still have more money. They're still bullish. They're still stacking uranium all at a time when we have geopolitical turmoil causing the above ground supply to just get scarcer and scarcer because a lot of it does come from Russia and you have countries moving away from Russia. So a lot of that supply will not make its way over to the West. Poland, Lithuania want lower Russian oil cap nuclear curbs in new EU sanctions. So you have countries around the world scrambling in the West to support their nuclear infrastructure, to move away from Russia. Very good for the assets building in the West.